Here at Kentucky Tennessee Living, we strive to keep this site non-political in nature. All historical events posted are those that change the lives of future generations, as well as we remember those who fought on both sides of the Civil War. All events posted are for the benefit of remembering who we are as the American Appalachian people. Between the years of April 12, 1861 and May 9, 1865, the war between the states raged. The peace of the Appalachian Mountains was broken as brother took up arms against brother. Several battles were won and lost in the area of Letcher County, and we will try to cover as many of them as possible. John Hunt Morgan was born on June 1, 1864 in Huntsville, Alabama. He was the eldest of ten children born to Calvin and Henrietta Hunt Morgan. When Calvin Morgan's pharmacy failed, he moved his family to Lexington, Kentucky. There, John grew up on a farm and attended Transylvania College for two years. He was suspended from classes in 1884 for dueling with a fraternity brother. In 1846, Morgan became a Freemason and member of the Davis Lodge No. 22 in Lexington. John Morgan always wanted to be a military man. However, at that time, the U.S. military was very small, and so a military career was limited on an officer's commission. However, Morgan would end up joining the military later. When the call came for men for the Mexican-American War, John with his brother Calvin and Uncle Alexander enlisted into the U.S. Army in 1846. He would enlist as a Calvary private. Before he arrived in Mexico, Morgan would be elected to second lieutenant and then promoted to first lieutenant. He would then see combat at the Battle of Buena Vista in February of 1847. Upon returning to Kentucky, Morgan became a hemp manufacturer. He also married the sister of his business partner, 18-year-old Rebecca Gratz Bruce. His fortunes began to greatly improve when his mother, Henrietta, began to finance his business ventures after the death of John Wesley Hunt in 1849. John Wesley Hunt was Morgan's paternal grandfather and the founder of Lexington, Kentucky. Morgan's wife, Rebecca, gave birth to a stillborn son in 1853. She had contracted milk leg, which is caused from an infection of a blood clot in the vein. This led to Rebecca losing her leg over the infection. Known as a scoundrel, Morgan had a reputation as a gambler, womanizer, and being too generous with his money. It is widely known that Morgan fathered a slave son with an unnamed slave woman named Sidney, who later became the biological grandfather to African-American inventor Garrett Morgan. John wanted a military career, so he formed his own military militia artillery company in 1852. This militia was disbanded just two years later by the Kentucky State Legislature. Not one to give up, Morgan then raised an independent infantry company called the Lexington Rifles. He would often spend his free time drilling and being with his men. Most Kentuckians did not support secession, and Morgan was counted among them initially. After the election of Abraham Lincoln in November of 1860, Morgan wrote to his brother Thomas, who was attending Kenyon College in Northern Ohio. In his letter, he states that he thinks that Lincoln will be a good president, in his opinion, but he would wait to see what happens. Thomas Morgan then transferred his college to the Kentucky Military Institute in the spring of 1861 in case the state of Kentucky would need his services. By the 4th of July of that year, Thomas would leave the institute and join the Kentucky State Guard. John would remain in Lexington to tend to his business and his sick wife, Rebecca, until her death on July the 21st, 1861. In September of that year, Morgan and his militia company traveled to Tennessee where they joined the Confederate States Army. Morgan joined as a scout and by early 1862 held the rank of captain. He also raised the 2nd Kentucky Cavalry Regiment and was promoted to the rank of colonel on April 4, 1862. During the Battle of Shiloh on April 6 through the 7th of 1862, Morgan and his cavalrymen fought with a general Albert Sidney Johnston and his troops to face off against Generals Grant and Garfield. 
It was hoped that due to his bravery at this battle that the Kentucky state would leave the Union states and join the Confederacy. This did not happen as Kentucky remained neutral during the entire Civil War. With 900 men on July 4, 1862, Morgan led raids for three weeks through the state of Kentucky. One of his most interesting raids was against the Major General Don Carlos Buell's army. He would follow deep behind them and then pick them off from behind as they advanced. It is reported that he captured 1,200 soldiers whom he paroled, several hundred horses, and destroyed massive amounts of supplies. These actions were so successful that it unnerved the Kentucky military government and they sent many letters requesting help as they were being overrun in Kentucky. In December of 1862 through January of 1863, Morgan would then do the same thing to Union Major General William S. Rosecrans Army. He would have a victory at the Battle of Hartsville on December 7, 1862. During this time while he was carrying out his raids against Rosecrans, Morgan found time to get married. Martha Maddie Reddy became Morgan's bride on December 14, 1862. It was the same day that he had officially became a brigadier general. She was the daughter of Tennessee United States Representative Charles Reddy and a cousin to another Tennessee United States Representative William T. Haskell. Morgan was then promoted to brigadier general in command of a regiment on December 11, 1862. President Davis would sign the promotion on December 14. On May 1, 1863, he would receive a thanks from the Confederate Congress. The following raids will be the furthest north that the Confederacy would ever reach during the entire time of the Civil War. Morgan took 2,462 cavalry and a battery of light artillery of his men against the orders of General Bragg across the Ohio and Indiana state lines. Bragg had strictly forbid Morgan and his men to cross the Ohio River for concern that he might become too aggressive. In early July of 1863, Morgan and his men captured two steamboats at Brandenburg, Kentucky, which they used to transport troops across the Ohio River. Landing in Indiana with his men, Morgan would cause panic among the local residents of the area. There he was able to have several skirmishes, several of which included Corydon, Indiana, and Versailles, Indiana which he captured and paroled several thousands of Union soldiers. His raids captured the public imaginations as Morgan's raiders began to gain more fame during this time. Although now it is seen as nothing more than a very showy and futile sidelines of the war itself and seen as a direct violation to his commanding officer's orders. Major General Ambrose Burnside, the commander of the Department of Ohio, was alerted to the presence of Morgan and began to shift his troops around to confront and capture Morgan. On July 19, 1863, Morgan's raids were almost ended when trying to cross from the Ohio into West Virginia at Bluffington Island, Ohio. 700 of Morgan's men were captured and sent to the deadly Camp Douglas prisoner of war camp in Chicago. On July 26, Morgan and his 300 remaining men surrendered and was taken into prison. On November 27, 1863, Morgan and his six officers escaped their cells from the Ohio Penitentiary by digging tunnels into the inner yard and then scaling the wall. They then boarded a train near Columbus train station and arrived in Cincinnati, Ohio that morning. They jumped off the train before arriving at the depot and hired a skiff to cross the Ohio River. After his return, Morgan was then given reinforcements to his raiding party. These men were not as disciplined as the other men and caused a lot of problems following orders. Also, his former raiding days had caused outrage and thus the Union soldiers were now aware and prepared for the raiders. On June 1, 1864, John Hunt Morgan would lead his men against a small Union detachment from Pound Gap. They would use the Pound Gap as a way to gain access to central Kentucky and then again to escape. Morgan and his raiders would humiliate the Union soldiers that had set up camp at the base of Pine Mountain as they went through the area to Cynthiana, Kentucky. Against a weaker force, Morgan won a minor battle on June 10, 1864 at the Battle of Killer's Bridge 
on Licking River near Cynthiana, Kentucky. Known as the Second Battle of Cynthiana, on June 11, 1864, Morgan led his troops into battle once more. Feeling confident from his victory the day before, Morgan confronted a much superior Union mounted forces than the day before. This led to disaster as Morgan's forces and cohesive unit were decimated. Only a few escaped with their lives, including Morgan and a few of his officers. Although Bragg no longer trusted Morgan to obey his orders, on August 22, 1864, Morgan was placed in command of the Trans-Allegheny Department. This was to pull together all the forces of eastern Tennessee and southwestern Virginia. During the summer of 1864, a bank in Mount Sterling, Kentucky was robbed. Morgan was accused of masterminding the robbery. While it is suspected that some of his men might have been involved, it is now thought that Morgan had nothing to do with the event. However, he was charged with criminal banditry and removed from his command. While working to clear his name from the bank robbery, Morgan and his men were encamped near Greenville, Tennessee. On the morning of September 4, 1864, Union troops attacked. While trying to retreat with his men from the area, Morgan was shot in the back by a Union cavalryman. Morgan died from this injury. His body is buried in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for watching our video about John Hunt Morgan and his raiders. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring you the history of the Appalachian Mountains. Please like, subscribe, and share below. Also hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And once again, be sure to leave us a hey y'all in the comment section below. Thank you for continuing to support us and watch our videos.